Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Wild Chats, your home for everything animals. I am Ryan. Funny face over there is Maria. <laughs> you just look like, oh, hello. <laughs> it was just funny. There's only that one second drag where you're like, you don't want to start talking too soon, but then if you wait too long, there's this awkward like. <laughs> then you had that face like, <laughs> it was just hilarious. It's okay. I have to make a comment about it. I don't want to start talking yet. Exactly. I'll get it eventually. I'll get it eventually. Um, it was 25 videos. I mean, 25 yeah, podcasts. Yeah. So today, Maria, we're going to have one of the, the classic, classic debates. You know, you've got like dark chocolate versus white chocolate. You got mountains versus beach, cats versus dogs. Today, the classic topic that we're going to tackle. I thought you were going to talk about chicken or an egg. Like, I thought that was the classic conundrum. Well, there's a, there's a lot of, but it's not a conundrum. It's like, which one's better? So this is not which one came first. But the one that we're going to tackle today is bubbles <gasps> air, air or soap which one's well, better depends form is better Ooh, i mean call me intrigued no you're supposed to answer that that's my question to you oh you that was the question <laughs> now, answer, i mean we could at the end decide which clip was better of, of it but uh in your opinion i actually do have an opinion i actually okay. like water bubbles and so. here's the reason why when I went to San Andreas, which is a, San Andreas is a, um, an island of the coast of Colombia. And we went swimming uh, to go see and feed fish. And uh, under us, and it was like 50 feet, like the bottom was really far. We were in the middle of, of, the, of the ocean, in my opinion, and how far. And there were scuba divers. Okay. And I, instead of looking at the fish, because I don't, I don't like feeding wild animals. I don't want to get them to be excited about human, whatever. That's just my opinion. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure there is, there is valid points either way. But um, instead of me playing with the fish and feeding them, I follow the scuba divers uh -huh. to feel the bubbles. Gotcha. Because the bubbles just feel so good. Like when they just let like, go oh, and you're like, ah, bubbles. Okay. So hence bubbles. You, you enjoy a nice a nice bubble massage bubble sash okay bubble bubble sash um <laughs> when you were a kid though did you ever like make your own did you guys make your own soap bubbles was that like a thing could you buy i soap? don't remember doing that i don't remember i'm or sure bubble. we did i mean it's just soap and and okay. isn't it like baking soda or some crazy i mean you could do it with just like dishing soap dish, and water water it was there are certain products that they sell in the markets that you're just kind of like why does this exist? It's just so much easier and cheaper to do it on your own, and it literally takes one or two steps. Um, bubbles are no, but there's certain that are tricks. There are certain tricks, and depending on the soap and and I don't know. I mean, if you want just whatever bubbles, then yeah, soap and water and whatever ratio it is. But okay, uh, so you're you're one of those people that's just like, oh well, when like the Coke at McDonald's tastes so much better or when somebody else makes my iced coffee, like it tastes so much better than when I make it. You're just more, more of those, like I do it myself. Yeah. Theoretically, but it's just never as good. Well, I used to make my own deodorant and my own skin products for a while. Like okay. I will make them and, and it was just a lot of fun to, to test them. And you're like, Ooh, how stinky are you today? It was actually surprising how easy it is to make a good, product that is homemade it takes time uh, not time it takes time and and a little bit of knowledge but it's just a lot of fun i actually do enjoy making my own stuff okay okay mm -hmm. um that's the one funny thing about life it seems like you either have the time or the money it's pretty and rare that we're blessed enough to have both time and money and then I feel like if when those opportunities come around in life like you have to take advantage of them you can't just kind of be like I've got time to sit on a beach and money to buy pina coladas. Like that's, for me, those are the the moments where it's like, all right, I want to get into a new thing where I can explore stuff. And if money doesn't come out of it or learn a new language or go, like it's so rare that those things happen, that those, those are the times that I feel like, like if you can impart lessons, I don't have children, but I feel like that would be one of my like lessons I would write down. If you ever have the privilege of having both time and money, take advantage of it. Don't waste Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Good yes. point. Um, so today we are going to. What uh, a bubbling conversation. It is. It is. 
with a very bubbly individual over there. She's uh, she's she's a little she's a little perky and, and, and bubbly today. Um, <laughs> I'm letting my hair down. <laughs> yes. So we are going to uh, delve into the. Uh, of course, this is an animal show, so it's going to be uh, animals in the world of bubbles. Um, I wanted to start off with. I, I think if you're going to think of like the most well-known animals for bubbles, what what would you kind of put on your like top two three list? Or your top one, whatever you got. Well, <laughs> this is me going, you know how my mind goes. When I think of bubbles and I think of the ocean, okay. I think of how whales hunt mm -hmm. and they use bubbles, a pattern of bubbles to trick their fish that they're going to hunt to stay within one spot. So uh -huh. all of the whales, the pot of whales can come and, and eat them. Nice. So when I think of bubbles and the power of bubbles, that is the first thing that came to my mom was that. Or okay. like uh, I saw a video of this guy in a fish tank and the turtle wanted to, the tur yeah, the turtle wanted to keep biting him. Like he kept trying to bite him. So what okay. he did is he literally just got under the turtle and just blew a lot of bubbles and the turtle went away. Oh, it was like the first time okay. that the turtle kept trying to bite him. He's like, okay, this is enough. So he actually blew bubbles and the turtle just... <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I thought that was ingenious. But I think that's a good point because I think sea animals do use bubbles a lot. Um, like you said, for the killer whales, they use it as more of like a uh, an entrapment. It's almost a cage because the, the fish don't know. Visually, it's weird, and then they don't want to I don't know if it was them. a killer whale. I, it was one of the larger cetacean, uh, not cetacean, one of the uh, bigger um, whales. I think it was actually humpback. Or a, a true whale. Okay. I thought they usually like hunt krill and stuff like that. Like really teeny tiny animals. Is that they also do. Uh, they also hunt. Uh, what's the thing you put on pizza? It smells horrible. Anchovies. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you guys are ever short on anchovies, go blame the whales. It's all their fault. No, I don't <laughs> think you ever. Yeah, no, that's just not something that I would ever. I'm like. Oh, I have zero anchovies. I got plenty. I'm good. I, I exactly. Got you can keep them. You can keep them. Yeah, thank you very Although, much. <laughs> Caesar dressing. Caesar dressing has to have a little bit of anchovy in it to add that extra dimension. That's the only way I will eat an anchovy. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like me with the uh, um, with like Worcestershire sauce. I'll only put it in my like burger patties if I'm making it because it gives it a little bit of a smoky flavor. It's like the only thing I'll put Worcestershire cider in. So I see your point, uh, anchovy and okay. Before yeah, there is a, there is a, a, a cooking show, um, <laughs> save that for the backstage party if we're going to do uh, other topics. Um, but like you were talking about the whales, they sometimes they use bubbles for play. Sometimes they use it for trapping. Sometimes they use it for communication. And they're when I think of bubbles, I actually do think of beluga whales first. Like they're the ones that I think have the most fun and playful with it. Um, they're just so happy looking. And they can Ooh, do it. He's having a mouth. blast. Look at it. Yeah. And I love oh. how the top of their, their head kind of wiggles. But the cool thing is they can do bubbles out of their mouth or out of their blowhole. I saw that. It can come from either location. And the cool thing is you can almost see, well, the trainer is there raising her hand or his hand, but I love how happily interactive the situation is with this particular beluga whale. Just mm -hmm. It just seems very happy to be there and interacting and blowing bubbles. And they are such an interactive animal. Like you will find them, um, there have been videos of people tossing balls and the beluga whale goes and gets it like a puppy. And it's just having a blast. And I, that makes my day. So the, the frequency of the bubbles actually made um, a place in Canada, one of the uh, a marine land in Canada. They spent eight years actually researching over the 44 belugas they've had over those eight years of, of trying to decipher what if the bubbles were just fun. Because a lot of times belugas, they'll blow bubbles and they'll slip, they'll hit it with their tail or they'll swim through it. So it looks like it's more of a playful thing um, than necessarily communication. But then they came to find out that they actually would blow bu certain bubbles to actually reflect certain moods to other belugas. I would have thought so. 
Mm -hmm. And then they, they were used for communication also. So there's kind of a dual purpose of play and communication, but also conveying moods. Um, and I don't know exactly how or why this occurred, because I don't think belugas have a hard time getting air to kind of express themselves. But somebody decided to cheat for him and gave him an air tube. <laughs> <laughs> Look how happy he's like, I need to have this. And that was the other thing, where the, the bubble came from, whether it was the mouth or out of the blowhole also conveyed. And they were finding that women were a lot more expressive than the men uh, with their bubble and their bubble usage. You mean male or female? What's the that? Woman beluga? Male yeah. or female? <laughs> <laughs> like men are more less expressive. Okay, I can see that in general. Yes, but... <laughs> animal kingdom thing um <laughs> that is actually extremely adorable and, and what people forget is that playfulness in playing builds communities and mm -hmm. bonding so yeah. when 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 different schools wanted to cancel playground in exchange for education what what they didn't realize in the long run is that if children don't learn to interact they will not learn the unspoken language, which in this case translate into moods, mm -hmm. uh, the unspoken language, the body language. Uh -huh. And it's just so fascinating how it took them, how many years you said the research took? Um, I think they did eight years, eight years over 44 annals. Eight yeah. years of research. And the funny thing is, sometimes, in my opinion, research is just validating what you already intuitively could pick up based on just observation and i would have thought if i if you had asked me what did i think bubbles were doing or what was the purpose of bubbles for them i will have probably come up with it probably has to do with playfulness and therefore an expression of language based on the thickness of the bubble or how you how many bubbles you do like you can tell that beluga whale that you were showing there mm -hmm. was just so having such a blast it was almost neurotic joy. But they did find that there's definitely a differentiation between the fun bubbles and the communication bubbles. And that was the interesting, interesting part. They could tell mm -hmm. by the frequency. I guess they can do kind of a, instead of one bubble, it could be several tiny bubbles. And they found that if they blew it out of their blowhole forcibly, that was the warning side of stay away. So I the trainers that. were starting to learn of like, that's when the whales didn't want to be approached for whatever reason. So obviously they were doing it for themselves to be able to communicate with their animals, but they also wanted to see what the communication patterns were, if there even was, because it does look very playful on the surface. And then they did concede in the study that bubbles are very rarely seen in the wild, but you rarely are underwater with belugas in the wild. Because when you see them, you see them at the top of the water. So they couldn't really say whether the communication of the bubble styles would be the same in the wild. And they kind of said, we know this and we concede that in the wild it might be completely, totally different. And this study may only be relevant to animals in an aquarium. We, we and don't... also, also one thing that reminds me of another video we did about uh, when the monkeys, the macaques will submerge in Japan. They noticed that that behavior was also very territorial, like it was in that area. It wasn't that all macaques in the entire area or northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere will actually do the thermal water as a source mm -hmm. of heat. There are certain things that are learned behaviors that they have seen from another animal. Like just like uh, when whales communicate, they actually pick up songs that are very to that particular region. Uh, and as they come and meet of the south, they mm -hmm. exchange songs. Yeah. And then they will spread them again through mm -hmm. all the different areas of the continent mm -hmm. or the of the world and it was just so fascinating how bubbles are a source of communication but it could also be because that was just developed there as you said as the research proved basically well, belugas are known for bubbles even in the wild but it's just not seen very frequently so they couldn't make mm -hmm. any determination whether the stuck is yeah. you really have to study did it come out of the blowhole of their mouth what was the size frequency what there's just so many variations that when you can look at, at an animal over eight years and much less a, a pod of 44 of them that have come through that you can do an extensive study. And they just said that, you know, obviously that, that would be impossible in the wild at this point. I mean, the best you could do is track them possibly, but 
Um, that's beautiful. That, that's beautiful. But again, our, our classic debate that we have to come back to is, and I'm sorry, but classic debate. I mean, this is this is a debate. But soap bubbles are just a little more fun. I mean, you, you balloons yeah. run, like squat around their their bubbles, but it's like I've rarely ever seen a kid or an animal where a soap bubble is floating around that they didn't want to like swat at it, break it, eat it. I agree. There is a, the playful nature that comes with the soap bubble that you just you oh. can't you just can't help yourself. <laughs> no, you know, but just watching that kitten do that stuff just makes me just so happy. Like that's just pure joy right there. Uh huh. Pure joy, and I've seen the videos of the dogs just running towards the bubbles, and it's just so adorable oh. how they will do that. It's every like I again, you rarely ever see an animal. Like sometimes the animal will be irritated because there's so many and it's hitting them in the face. Like bubbles can be an irritant depending on you know. And if it hits you in the eye and explodes, of course it's gonna hurt you. Exactly, exactly. And then if you're if you're uh, unfortunately put in timeout, and your your encasement for timeout, so you don't go anywhere. Timeout in encasement. Bubble, you may not enjoy bubbles as much as you used to enjoy them. No. <laughs> no. That cat is not looking happy at all. Like that's just a problem what right the there. Heck? <laughs> Poor thing. He's like, what do we do with this? Oh, he doesn't seem to be too annoyed after a while. Like you can see as as things do. He pops the bubble with his tail, but at first he's like, what the heck? And then he just kind of eases into it. He's like, all right, whatever. I'm just gonna lay down. I'm good. But he didn't realize he popped it with the tail, though. That was the key part. Pure accident. That just looked like it just disappeared on its own. <laughs> There is something magical about bubbles. I mean, they really are. And when you think of, of other, well, this wouldn't be called a bubble, though. But when people generate smoke and how the natives in many, actually many cultures around the world will use smoke to communicate mm -hmm. and how the different fluctuations of the smoke will, almost like what you were saying about beluga whales, will the warning, so three puffs of this smoke mm -hmm. will mean one thing or so that's just fascinating how communication yeah. at long distances could be applied mm -hmm. but that's like, i, I yeah. went 10 steps ahead no but that's all right because that's a lot of times over distance that's all you have before technology you can't you can only yell so far you can only like the the best communication yodel. you can yodel yodel i mean it was is like wonder woman in the movie where they had to like make the alert and somebody with a fire arrow hit one tower and then that that person sent it to another fire was kind of the best most visible sign that you could use so yeah it completely makes sense yeah the management of fire became one of the most important achievements in human history at the beginning of course yeah see the only thing that uh, problems i have sometimes is is you know Cats, when they get addicted to bubbles, like I've seen cats, like they'll swat at them because they don't really know how to make bubbles, but they like playing with them. And then they end up like spilling your bubbles all over the place. Like that was always like one of the most traumatic experiences as a child. You're like, oh, oh, my bubbles. And you're like, just go to the sink, put some soap in there, put some water. You're good to go. It's not that big of a deal. Like don't throw a fit. This is easy to make. This is easy to make. Exactly. But when I was growing up, we had, uh, my dad built us a sandbox. And... I feel bad because like he, he was trying to give us a place to go, but he, we didn't factor in like the neighborhood cats. He gave the cats a place to go to. Essentially, <laughs> that's what happened. So our play, kids play sandbox just turned into uh, one big cat sandbox. And I wish I would have known this trick then to be able to tell him. But if you want to keep cats PSA. sandbox, no, this isn't a safety feature. We're gonna we're gonna back off on the PSAs. We're gonna throw one in every once in a while if it actually. Fine, in life. fine. We're gonna back it off just a little. I, I also don't have the drop, but what you do is you put uh, white vinegar and you drizzle it over the sand, and the cats want nothing to do with the white vinegar, so they won't go into your sandbox. Nice, and also that will prevent uh, other critters uh, mm -hmm. that may burrow in in the sand to stay away, because most animals and weeds do not grow weeds or are attracted to animals 
uh, to the sand if there is vinegar. They don't like vinegar. Exactly. So that's a great way to prevent weeds from growing too now that I think of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you as a kid probably wouldn't want to be in the sand if it smells like vinegar. Yeah, but I, they said, what is it? Like drizzle a pint of white vinegar over the sand and then stir it in with a shovel. Um, this says spade, so it was clearly written by somebody in England. But a uh, shovel, we're going to call it a shovel, not a spade. Um. <laughs> yeah, because when I think of a spade, I literally think of a, of a sword when I think of a spade. Oh, well, spade is specifically the, the pointy shovels that are shaped like a spade on a, a playing card deck. Okay. The pointy shovels specifically are called spades. So So uh, when next time you play cards, you can say, can I have a shovel, please? Eight of right. shovels. Can you shovel over a couple extra cards here? Go fish. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you have an eight of shovels. <laughs> right. and, and since I was going to throw that in, I wanted to throw in one, one more fun card. Uh, cat hack for everybody do you okay. know the trick to get uh, your, your cat not to uh, destroy and unravel your toilet paper rolls oh uh, you put it facing the other way what other other way flip the roll because they usually go one way the roll rolls no because they're talking... not more okay i feel like they get frustrated and they're like why isn't this unraveling and then it just still becomes but that's that's one way that could work uh, it does. Any, any other guesses? For your toilet paper to be protected from cats? Like yeah. the toilet paper roll or just the toilet paper thingy? The, the roll, like, so you don't go into the, the bathroom paper. and use it and you're like, okay, and now there's toilet paper all over the ground. Unless I want to go TP somebody's house, I don't know how to use this anymore. My cats used to do that. They used to unravel the whole thing and just drag it throughout the house. Uh huh. They love it. That's a thing. <laughs> Uh, maybe put a dog's face in okay. the lid. Something right. I'm kidding. That's not gonna work. Um, something that movements. So if it, there is a movement, then it will blow air uh, to scare them away. Or you could just use the same trick you use for the sand and just drizzle white vinegar on it. And then on your toilet paper. <laughs> Oh, let's see you do that. I see how that goes. Please tell me. Please, people, tell us how that goes. Don't try it. Just, just assume. Uh, no, the yeah. Imagine, imagine, because we don't want anybody doing something silly and getting hurt. So don't try it at home. <laughs> Please no, do not sprinkle a pint, a pint of white vinegar in your toilet paper. That would be being silly, of course. Um, no, but you just take the end of the toilet paper and you tuck it inside the toilet paper roll, inside the, the actual cardboard. Yeah. So there's no way for it to unspin because if it's turned the other way, you can still unspin it. Like the cats can figure out to push up instead of pull down. I don't know if they're that. I if mean, my cats were not that smart. Is inside the roll, then they'll spin and nothing will happen. They may still want to use it as like a scratching post, but as far as unraveling your toilet paper all over the place, and then carrying it through the house like Maria's cats like to do, uh, it would at least save you that. They uh, used to also play in the water of the toilet. <laughs> okay. So I remember we left them for a couple of days, and uh, we left them food for like five weeks and water for like 10, and, um, you know, litter box, plenty for the few days we were gone. And you can tell they got in the toilet and played with the water because you can see their paw prints. And then the toilet. <laughs> the the reason why I left the water open is just in case something happens. There is a source of water. Yeah. Did Did you take the the chlorine tablet out of the tank first? <laughs> Thank goodness there was no chlorine towel. I mean, tablet. <laughs> why is the cat so clean, like bleached out? <laughs> I swear is the cat sparkling not... white. He wasn't blue when we left. I don't know what happened here. I have no clue what could have happened here. Like when my hair, when I used to go swimming as a kid, we used to swim so much that our hairs will turn turn green from mm -hmm. all the chlorine. Yeah, yeah. Pretty typical if you've got blonde hair, especially. That, that happens pretty frequently. Mine was just blonde from the burning because my hair is not blonde. But from being outside so much, my hair was like burned. So oh. yeah, so I will get bleed. I will get the blue because it was just so toasted from being outside. Yeah, as I as I grew up, my culture switched. So I'm I'm I've told people before I'm quarter Italian, quarter German. 
when I was younger, I had blonde hair, like German blonde hair, but then really tan, like Italian skin. And as I got older, my hair got darker and my skin got lighter and then it got more freckly. So then I ended up with German skin and more Italian. <laughs> like my colors just swapped as I got older. I don't know. That's hilarious. I was pretty red haired. Like my hair was red tinted, but it's okay. also because um, I'm on the sun a lot, or I was on the sun a lot as a child, so the hair will start literally burning mm. and changing colors as you expose it to the UV light. Not good for the skin. <laughs> so you were talking about um, following um, the scuba divers, so just so you could enjoy the bubbles. And uh, I, found a fur I found a turtle that actually had the exact same philosophy you did. He just <laughs> right, over the, right over the bubble area and just get himself a nice little bubble massage. Love it. Oh, uh, how adorable. So it's not just you. This is a very common thing. Um, <laughs> look at the, it's like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> I'm good. I can float right here. That's perfect. Honestly, that's perfect. It's got to be the bubbles coming off his shell because clearly he can't, turtles can't feel their shells, right? They don't have actual like sensors there. Well, I don't know because when, I mean, they're, they're when you look at other videos of of critters, they actually have uh, people brushing them. So I don't know if it's because they have a sensation or because they're trying to keep themselves clean. So you can see when when the water drips really strongly, they kind of stand there. They look okay. like they're wiggling. So I don't know if it's because they have sensation. I doubt it. I think the the their uh, shell is almost like the keratin in our nails. It's just That's a very was, strong. But um, it could be, it could be, not an expert here, guys. This will be a good one for you to tell us. It could be because they want to remain clean. So they enjoy the scrubbing because it helps them remove parasites or algae or anything like that. All right. I had to look it up. Now, I was just too curious. I had to look it up. Um, <laughs> sea turtles, but sea turtles can feel their shell. Sea turtles consist of bones, which are covered in layers, uh, made of keratin, just like you said. Um, but they have nerve endings, <clears throat> even in the bones of their shell. So they can, sea turtles can feel. Uh, I don't know if that extends to all turtles, but I would assume if sea turtles can feel, then other, other turtles should be able to. Yeah, but them. the sea turtles' shells are no. more like scales. Like when you think of, um, I can think of, no, it's true. I just I just found it. Even the even the land feel their shells is because their shell does contain nerve endings. However, the nerve endings in their shells are not very sensitive and generally just transmit vibrations. Interesting. It'll be like our nails. I mean, if you touch them, you don't feel them, but you still capture the vibration. Okay, yeah. it's not gonna work. But so he's he's enjoying himself because he can't actually feel the bubbles probably popping against his. Uh, against his shell, but then it's also running I, up his leg and stuff too. So I'm sure that all the whole thing feels. I, I also think in this case, it has a lot to do with, with remaining clean. I mean, they, they are an, animals in general do their best, not all of them, but the majority do want to protect themselves. And that's why they have, as we were talking er, uh, in another video about the symbiotic relationship to keep themselves nice and clean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're beautiful. I, I have a, uh, th this one will be a dilemma one for you. Ah. I, I mean, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to play the clip and I want to get your reaction and then we can kind of debate it uh, after. Dilemma, the let's see. Okay, so that's a scene at all. Or a, uh, oh, ooh, how peculiar. He got trapped in it. Yep. He got curled up in the air bubble. Um. And we're going to start doing a better job of this. I think we need to for uh, the, the audio podcast listeners. <laughs> there is a, a scuba diver. He's underwater and he blows a bubble vertically into, uh, was that a squid? Sea nettle. And uh, the squid or a, a medusa. And he starts twisting with it. Um, I couldn't decide whether, my first initial response to that was, wow, that's pretty cool. And then I was like, is that mean to the animal? Like, is he enjoy like, 
because it's not like the animal swam towards it to volunteer like oh this will be fun i want to do this again the guy kind of lined up underneath the squid he did he did he went for it so it, i went from like oh that's really cool to oh i don't i don't maybe that's not so cool um, i mean it is, we have to admit the person who did that the guy who did that has skill like that's a skill. That's just as good as the beluga whale skill we saw mm -hmm. earlier. He's so nobody can deny. Yes. 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 Okay. Nobody can deny that. But I do not agree with how he did it. It would have been actually cooler if he would have been able to blow the bubble, and the the sea nettle still be in the middle. Like that would have been very impressive instead yeah, of catching it, it on on the yeah. air. And maybe it's gonna be impossible. But maybe that's what he's trying to do. Um, you know what, guys, we're going to have some fun with this one. I want your guys' uh, opinions and perspective. Was that really cool or really cruel or something in the cool middle? Cool or cruel. Ooh. All right. We should have a segment called cool or cruel. No, because we don't want things to be cruel, but there's certain things that I don't think we mean them to be cruel. Like, I bet you nothing really happened to this uh, sea nettle or, or, you know, Medusa. I don't know if he's a sea nettle. Really. Medusa are a bit bigger than that. <laughs> you're right. You're right. But they're from the same species. They're from a Medusa. Mm -hmm. um, so this gelatinous creature, I'm sure, didn't get harmed. But mm -hmm. still, the stress of being, you know, caught on on a bubble like that. I don't think but that I was pretty. I've also seen animals do things like that where they enjoy the spin of it, like. We've all seen animals kind of hunt out things. You're like, oh, I guess he's having fun with that. I mean, I came across a also, video. Also, been exposed a couple of times to it, I understand. But as a sea creature such as these gelatinous ones, since we couldn't come up with the practical name for it. Squid of some sort. What? It's a squid of some sort. It's not a squid. It was a medusa. No. Medusa is a type of squid. No. Medusa is a gelatinous, like uh, from the family of... Uh, not not a squid, but the is the one that has the cap and the like uh, sea nettles. That's okay. what that was. But there's lots of different. Yeah, I think this is a nettle. This is a nettle. There's look a... look at it again. Okay. I find the the clip again. Oh, you want to play the clip again? Okay. Yeah, so you can see what creditor it is. I think it it. I'm almost ninety. Yeah, look at it. It has the laying the tentacles of a of a sea nettle. And you can see the gelat gelatinous form of it. Okay, I guess when I think squid, that's what I think a squid is to me. Like that's no, like if, is there a way to stop? Like you can see right there, it has the cap like a mushroom, mm -hmm. and the little legs of the of the tentacles of a um, of a nettle or. A... But I guess I don't know the the different categories of the cephalopods. Yeah, this wouldn't be a cephalopod. This will be more like which one is the ikunka. Um, the box, the box uh, Medusa, the one that's most dangerous from that's Japan I'm and Australia. Squid. No. Ikunkaji, something like that. We talked about it. Um, it's it's a, it's a July. It looks like a man of war from that family. Yeah, Portuguese man of war is uh, the other one. Box. All right, we've stretched this one too far. I'm giving up on it. I don't want to be searching Google. That's not fun for anybody else to watch. Hey, guys, no, we know absolutely nothing about cephalopods, Portuguese man of war, squids. Maria and I will disagree and debate. But it's, a it's a nettle. So it's a nettle. It's from the Medusa family. Okay. But, okay. Portuguese. It's a jellyfish. It's a jellyfish. That's what I'm coming with. It's a jellyfish. A jellyfish. Cephaloform. Siphonophore is the order for Portuguese man of war. Yeah, but it's not the Portuguese. It's a, it's a jellyfish. Okay, well, that's what you you asked me to look up. Jellyfish. That's the word that neither of us could find. Seriously? Okay, we should both be fired. We're doing an animal <laughs> show, and we could not come up with the word jelly. Jellyfish is what I meant the entire time, and I kept saying squid. Now I see why you're like, it's not a squid, dude. And I'm like, no, it's clearly a squid. Jellyfish was the word I meant the entire time. And the sad part is here I am quoting facts about the most dangerous box and i'm like medusa is the only classification i could come up with <laughs> because that's a higher classification of the jellyfish and the nettles and <laughs> and then i was thinking of the lion uh jellyfish which is the largest of all of the 
box, box jellyfish, you idiots. It's box what? jellyfish. You idiots. <laughs> Ikukaji, something like that. He has a funky name. The most dangerous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well. Uh, this is for you, Ryan. You can do this. You can do this. <laughs> Oh, it was the, that was the most like condescending uh, hearts and thumbs up uh, I've ever gotten on this show thus far. That was. Uh, that I think was, I've uh, only hit it. <laughs> I think I've only hit it once or twice. That and one time I hit it the wrong one. I was supposed to send it to you, and I hit it to myself, and it was hilarious because like, oh, mm. I hope he doesn't notice that I meant to hit his, but I hit mine. <laughs> that was the that was the old school condescending like, oh, you so smart, good boy, good job, yeah, no. Nicely done. A picture <laughs> chicks. <laughs> oh man. Um I'd love to get back on track and show some other fun videos. Now that was my last video. We got complete <laughs> um, So please like us and subscribe. Yeah, hold on. Let's see. I feel like I gotta throw in some kind of bonus video. What was your favorite video from the past? I feel we got off track and now uh let's see. <laughs> I gotta pick one. Let's see. It's gonna be mystery. Yeah, you know time it's the what this one anything fun in here let's see oh yes this is nowhere near an air bubble or a soap bubble but this doggy's got skills he's got skills i don't need a oh, we talked about him yep yep look at this herding style look at that everybody in everybody moving that's how you sheep herd right there people He's breaking the air bubble that was not allowing them to move with those fluffy critters. That's a border collie right there. We're trying to figure out what kind. <laughs> what do you say? I said the show's already off the rails. We don't have to try to pull it back. <laughs> I was trying to go with it, but then I went to border collie because it is a border. It was a border collie. That was, that was a borderline tie-in that you tried. <laughs> to go back on the rails. <laughs> We're trying to bubble these up. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, let's see. Animal that would blow the coolest bubbles. Let's see. What do you think? Beluga. I'm kidding. I was. I said it already. The the whales as they're trying to hunt, produce the they. What happens? What makes it so cool is when you look at from down below. Okay. As they align themselves to go hunting, they actually have a pattern. So one of them creates the pattern and the pattern is the bubbles start like a spiral up. Yeah. So it just starts engulfing them. And then, you know, as the bubbles go up or an upper, they kind of like, so they, they, they keep trapping them. They keep doing it in a spiral form. So it just makes it so fascinating when you look at it from the bottom. And then when you look at it from top, it looks like, like the rim, just a, like a circle as it's being portrayed. And it was so cute because I was watching a video of a mama teaching her have how to do it and it was just so adorable because at first they didn't know how to do bubbles and you have to have the pattern done right yeah or you're not gonna get the fish mm -hmm. have you seen the video of the uh the mama killer whale trying to teach the baby how to like beach itself to hunt seals and stuff no. oh i didn't realize how dangerous this was because <clears throat> okay. you have to be able to get that the killer whales have to be able to get onto the shore but they can't get so far onto the shore they can't get back out so yes. there's there's a strategy, and there was a mom trying to teach uh, her two calves how to do it safely. And, like, one time I think the mom actually had to kind of, like, pull the baby back a little bit because it went just a little too far. Um, and that's what and that's when they really get stuck is if they're hunting at high tide and they go too far, the tide never comes up to pick them back up. So, no. And they are mammals, so they breathe air. They're good to go but they have to stay moist and you be able to wait for the tide to be able to come up and get them. And that doesn't always happen depending on the time. Of, uh, yeah. You hear stories of, of many uh, cetaceans, cetaceans getting breached. And uh, I love when you watch the videos of, of people trying to help them, but you also have to be careful. Like if a shark gets breached, when you drag it back, you have to be careful with the gills because you don't want them to get full of sand because they need to, have them clean or you almost have to resuscitate them the way to resuscitate a fish is literally you go back and forth to activate their their gills yeah so it's like naturally breathing so you actually go back and forth back and mm -hmm. forth so 
help him. Um, anyway, that's my CPR class on fish resuscitation. Okay. No, and, I, and then I think that's too where it gets a little scary because depending on the shark, it's obviously stressed. It's finally back in its environment, but you're not letting it go. And that could end up being a really dangerous situation unto itself, but you're, you're trying to help. Um, yeah. That's something where, you know, PSA, you got to be careful when you do something. Oh, like you can say PSA. <laughs> <laughs> I can oh, do it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, everybody. I hope you guys had a good time. This one went a little bit off the rails, but sometimes that's the fun of it, too. Um, and uh, we will see you guys next time. We got some fun ones coming up that I'm looking forward to. If you guys are part of the uh, the Patreon crowd, we're going to do the uh, backstage behind the scenes. I don't know where that one's going to go. That'll be interesting. And uh, we will see you guys next time.